indeed we're going to the second map right now here on team forest tv with our coverage of the Asia Forest Mercenaries Cup 5. It's the grand final between Lee Jong Boom and, for freak's sake, Shunik, tell me about how Asians like to play Viaduct. Um, I think, for the most part, we do actually do the standard, you know, suicide wave, get Uber kind of thing. But I think these teams are what we've seen on Kali Wash. I think they'll be more inclined to do the fuck it, just push anyway push. <laughs> Will there be any uh, snipers, any heavies? Yeah, I think definitely Ozer and the other scout, um, HSK, going sniper, they're quite good snipers and they're definitely known for their sniping, so I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if anything like that happens. I think Toshiko on FFS is also quite a formidable sniper, so we're definitely going to be seeing some snipers on this map. I get sure. the feeling we might see Crits Creek as well, Commander X. Yeah, both medics happy to run it on the last map, so I won't be surprised at all if we see it here. I am slightly concerned for for Freak Lake though, because last map their scouts got dominated uh, pretty hard, really. And Viaduct, uh, it's just the scout, scouts rule on Viaduct. And if uh, Krabby Patty and Toshiko can't equal that, I think they could be in for a bad time here. Yeah, TJ uh, had some nice timing on his... Uh, bombs and his picks for FFS, but equally wide was uh, pretty devastating on the LJB side. So I think you're definitely right about the scouts being the big difference here. Uh, it's going to be difficult. I mean, really, Rufus should just try and dump all his all his stickies onto the scouts, do his best to destroy the scouts and tip that fight in their favor. And even if he dies, but yeah, these scouts, man, they're going to be tough to deal with. Yeah, it'll be interesting though, obviously, if uh, OZR or HSK choose to run Sniper, it might actually tip the scout fight the other way if they're not hitting their shots. So it'll be interesting to see, firstly, their choice of, like, rollout, and then how they play it on the map, how tightly they play it. I think they can be the deciding factor, though. I wouldn't be surprised if we see both of them just roll both scouts and just try and dominate with aggression. Maybe, uh, for freak's sake, should just run crits, turtle up around their own cliff and uh, have a sniper as well, maybe a heavy too, just like run all the <laughs> all the things you can do to upset your enemy and see if they can frustrate their opponents here, but they did definitely have some nice play on Gullywash as you said, but Viaduct, it's a totally different kettle of fish, I can't even speculate what's going to happen. Hopefully Spice, Pyros, Engineers, the works. Engineers, oh, okay. got a level three on the middle point. We've seen it before in that Lithuanian land. Yeah, yeah. so I saw a level three sentry <laughs> rolled out by a. Uh, or maybe it was actually a French no, it land. Was, yeah, it was uh, Carnage. Mm, yeah, I forget. I forget the player, but it definitely happened. Uh, it definitely wasn't very successful, but it definitely happened. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the only other thing I'm still like skimming over the logs right now, and I saw Abel the, for Freak's sake pocket dropped like uh, only slightly more damage than his opposite number, but both soldiers died 17 times. Meanwhile, uh, Abel dropped 16 more frags, even more than that. 20 more frags? Yeah, 20 more frags than his counterpart, Babel, despite his team losing 3 2. So I don't really know. I guess it's not just scout cleanup again? Abel's able to, you know, follow up on this more damage, or has to do all the work himself. He doesn't get the cleanup support that Babel does, and that's why Babel has less frags. This is like a tongue twister, you know? Uh, <laughs> Abel's, Abel's, Abel's it's quite difficult Abel. with Abel and Babel <laughs> being the pockets on either side of this grand final. It's just asking for a slip up. It's oh, all a I cool joke. We've <laughs> <laughs> done this uh, on purpose. Six players on each side here. We could be getting underway pretty soon. Uh, um, mm hmm. I think they're just waiting for the STVs to catch up and stuff. Oh yeah, feel free to go ahead. Uh, tell them, give them the all clear, sign the gong, whatever you do in Asia. <laughs> Show off some fireworks, <laughs> crazy gone. bastards. Show off some fireworks! <laughs> oh my god. Release the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely, this is how communication happens in Asia, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> they, don't use, they have telephones, they just choose not to use them in favour of alternative methods of communication smoke signals smoke <laughs> you guys might have invented paper sure but <laughs> that sounded like there was a second half to that sentence ads but it didn't seem to be 
something something racist <laughs> yeah <laughs> putting your own racist racist joke here fill in the blanks <laughs> yourself <laughs> I think I'm just gonna ask Commander X to cast from now on. You've done this racist thing two times in a row every cast. It's fine, I'm Irish. It's what we do. <laughs> that's, that's the only reason he casts these games. He has a whole <laughs> list. He has a whole list of inappropriate jokes that he never gets to make while casting European Team Fortress. So he's got to get him out of the way here. It's true. Nobody's watching it this time of day either. It's like too early for the Americans and uh, afternoon TF2 for Europeans is like only the de degenerates show up into chat and they appreciate that sort of thing. They love a bit of uh, casual racism on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon, right? Right? <laughs> yep. Sunday is the day of racism. I haven't even That's said anything offensive yet. I've just hinted at it. Mean, <laughs> any offense you've taken so far is all, bit, it's all in your own head. You've all had to jump to those conclusions of offense. We've not actually done anything wrong. Political correctness gone mad here, you know. You know what they I said did? the word racism. Racism. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did like last map. You know when we had those pauses and there was a player timed out. They said, "Oh, we've got player hanging." You know, like you know when the player stops mid, like mid air. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna maybe adopt that saying. Player hanging. <laughs> yeah. What do you could, What do you uh... say instead then? If they're not hanging, what do you say instead? They're we stuck we in need to pause. Thing? They timed out. We just, we just say, we, out, yeah. we just say what it says on Team Fortress, we just copy and paste, basically. We don't, but we don't they invent our own out. saying. It's like they just um, need lag. to catch up with the lag. Yeah. They're lagging, yeah. What are the pings like here, actually? I mean, paying attention. It's pretty... pings look quite fair. Yeah. It's a Hong Kong server, so... It's actually quite fair. Both of the teams aren't actually from Hong Kong. In the past, um, though, there's been some big differences in pings, right? Some players over 100, some under... 50. Um, no, today the, looks good. Yeah, some of the countries like Malaysia, India, and Philippines, they get kind of the short end of the snake. They have like bad things everywhere. And uh, Japan's actually been pretty okay for the most part. So I think Asians, um, sometimes we get bogged down by lag, but it's not that often. I think we honestly get bogged down more by like bad server operators and just like terrible server hardware. Wow, do you hear that? Server operators of Asia, you've just been called out live on air by Shinnick. <laughs> step, step your game up. Uh, what's uh, going to happen in Asia Fortress then after this? What's the next competition or when will it be after the summer or happening it's, soon? Oh, we're going live, but um, it's around the summertime. We have one AFC 8 that's coming up. Lovely. It has gone live here though, and it will be the same colours as before. LJB in the blue, FFS in the red, but we're here onto the first middle. Commander X, what's happening? Uh, going on the first all right now. Both teams are coming to mid. Both just taking their side. Damage is being exchanged. No one really low, except for a W40k life taking all the spam. So I'm just going to go aggressive, really deep. TJ will be taken down, and wow, the rest of LGB explode out after that. That one bomb just seemed to trigger them all. They all followed in, and they just completely decimated for freak's sake. Turns out Babel was able uh, followed up on that bomb from Creep, and FFS absolutely destroyed there. So we might see the suicide waves now. Uh, buffs are being dished out here by King and Lionheart. She's going to move forward a little bit as they try to find out what is the defensive setup here from the blue team, Lee Jong Boom. And they're all sitting way back on middle. They're going to choose to fight around the point. I think that's a smart move. It's the narrowest point in the map. Uh, they're just going to allow FFS to come forward and try and pick their medic. They're saying, Come at me, bro. But FFS already <laughs> lose two, and then the suicide wave is effectively over. Yeah, I have a kind of mini announcement. I think I'm going to have to bow out. Uh, as the other tournament I was meant to be covering today is running on schedule one like this one. So the time has <laughs> clashed. Yeah, no, no offense, Asia. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm certainly going to watch Bod of this, and I'm going to leave it at you in the capable hands of Admirable and Shrunik and John as I go over to cast the Ultra Geo Cup of today. Oh wow, shameless plug, Commander X trying to steal <laughs> our viewers as well. But that is happening on the, the ComTF channel, isn't it? Uh, that's correct, yes. So I'm going to have to disappear over there, but good luck, and let me... Well, no, no, don't let me know who wins, I'm on the board. Well, I'm going to give a little spoiler right now, because life just died to a bomb in from Abel there. And uh, even though the clock is continuing to tick down in favour of the blue team, this is a, a significant uh, opening here for, for Freak Tick. They're already trying to move forward. King and Lionheart takes a little bit of damage there, but trying to regroup with her players. She's not sure if she wants to commit to this, but... 
Her team are already going forward. Beeble's gone down. He's going to be up again in 10 seconds. And uh, it looks like uh, LGB are just happy to give up the point here, Shinnik. Yeah, I saw Babel go pretty early on in the fight there, and I think that's what lost it for them. Babel seems to do this weird hiding spot thing, but it's not really a hiding spot, he's just standing behind the wall, and he's, he gets caught up by two. <laughs> oh, look at this, uh, as the blue team regroup on the left-hand side, in their perspective, they're trying to come up that uh, staircase on the left, but the pre-fire pipes are just uh, calling out that Babel is about to bomb in. Crab Patty is all over him. OZR just walks forward and destroys Toshihiko though, then turns around. Not sure who he wants to go for, looking for that medic force. He does decide to put some scatter shots into King of Lionheart plus the soldier bomb there. She had to pop off and uh, that's what they were hoping from that suicide wave. And just as they're about to respawn, life has hit 100% so that worked out pretty well in terms of time. They're not going to lose uh, too much excess time here. TJ is hiding forward. He's up on the little ledge here but he doesn't realise that life has already walked out on mid. Now TJ is going to come from behind, nobody's checked that left hand side door, but the Uber's already popped off, Life is just going to walk forward with his team here, Rufus goes down, Demoman down, Abel, uh, the pocket also down, King and Lionheart was too far forward there, and actually died as well to the bomb from wide, uh, TJ is still behind, he's been playing the long con, comes in here, very late, oh his last rocket misses, he tries to reload but can't get one in the tube before he gets shot down by the shotgun of Babel, that was uh, pretty messy there Shinnick. Yeah, it seemed like FFS wasn't very coordinated. It just kept, you know, staying too far forward, trying to get the last rocket off, and it's costing them. They're all dying like one by one, late deaths, and yeah, they need to focus fire. But oh, here comes the ball. Bombing in. Yeah. They have time for uh, <laughs> at least one more suicide wave, but uh, Abel's already gone in on his own. Usually, you want to try and coordinate these rather than going in one at a time, but. It it's sort of a fake suicide wave, they're just uh, sending a couple of players to distract whilst they try and cap the point because uh, LGB have given them so much ground, they just backed all the way off but uh, they tried to do maybe two things, weren't sure exactly what their plan was and now they're putting themselves in a difficult position. Abel is uh, half healthier and he might die when this is really their last opportunity to push. They need to wait for players, they need to commit everyone forward and try and get the force then back off and then cap the point again, it's going to be a big ask but here comes the Uber actually as King and Abel is walking forward as well. Life pops off first and the, the FFS medic pops off second so there's a few seconds to be milked here. They can move forward and they need to get these frags. They need damage here but it's only Toshihiko going forward. Where is the rest of his team? Here comes the cleanup. The spawns are coming in slightly faster for the red team as they keep the point alive. They have managed to activate it. We're into overtime here and they will clean up. Wow. The health is so bad on FFS. Toshi goes on 4 HP. Abel's on 11, Crab's on 48. Wow. It yeah, seems like the opposite happened there. Like, um, for the most part, they did this hold where they could have uh, their soldiers and their scouts and their demos in front and they could just sit at the back, hold, like building his Uber. But it seemed like it didn't work out that time. Yeah. Right now, life has a uh, big advantage. He probably knows it as well, but they're going to send in a few suiciding players. Uh, soldiers, demo men, and scouts all walking forward. Babel with a shotgun frag onto Rufus, but OZR's come behind. He just gets spotted in time by Krabby Patty. Uh, he's yet to take any damage. He's juking around there in between four players. Does eventually go down. He's going to spawn slightly later than the rest of his team, but they're sitting here with 100% charge, and they need to be pushing right now because King and Lionheart is just about to hit 90%. Will get her Uber in time, so this is uh, rules reverse here. It's a tough situation for. LJB, they're trying to push in and they've actually Ubered first as well, so as long as King and Lionheart pops off in time and saves their players, they'll be good, but Rufus goes down, they're going to be missing that demo man damage right at the end of this fight. Babel's behind on the cliff, tracking both scouts, and uh, this is actually looking pretty good here for LJB. They've managed to get three frags for their trouble and open up the flank. They're now oh. going to be able to cap the point. Well, I just saw a hair shot from the line. <laughs> that's why I orgasm. I understand. <laughs> clean yourself, clean yourself up, man. But uh, that will be the first round here in this the second map. And uh, LGB took the first map of taking the lead here onto the second middle. Rufus is fast off the rock. He's trying to put down damage onto Creek Creeps into 100 health as the bomb comes in. TJ going huge there. He's going to get life and Creep massive bomb. White is going to follow up in the spawn queue. They're getting cleaned up by the scouts. Just Toshi Eagle gets a 2k. Krabby Patty is going to find Babel as well and. For two players there, they managed to kill six. 
Yeah, the rock jump that Rufus does, like, which is really unorthodox. Like, this is honestly the first time I've seen him did this like really, really odd rock jump, and he's been getting like <laughs> early stickies down, and he's been putting good damage on the scouts from what I've seen. So, I think it's working out for him. He also hit like a pretty cool air <laughs> shot. Wow. <laughs> It did this guy with the headshot there. The Rufus is he was just perched up on that that rock there, like something out of the Lion King. But uh, <laughs> here comes a bomb in from. Nice sketch on there from White on the cliff. Surfs round onto the enemy cliff and gets the medic pick. Or actually, he, he just oh, distracted. It was AJSK who got the pick there onto King and Lionheart. Life has managed to survive and they retake control of the point. And that was a pretty poor defense there from For Freak's sake. Yeah, I see Creep constantly just moving up and he keeps prodding the FFS team and I don't think they know how to deal with him because Creep's been putting out so much damage, just constantly pressuring them. Um, I think Life is probably going to survive this. I think what he's going to do from the way his posture is just going to run inside the house and just be pretty safe, honestly. But if Suicide is winning, admirable is happening. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> Evil just getting stunned in the air. PJ as well has gone down. There's a guy trying to work the find there. That's Krabby Patty. He's down. Oh, it does get cleaned up by Creep as he tries to back off. But Life able to hold on to that Uber pretty easily. Good defense there by his team. And uh, now it's going to be the proper Uber battle. The suicide waves are over. We're going to see King and Lionheart commit to this one. There's no snipers on the field. No threat of body shots or headshots. But uh, they telegraph the fact that they're coming in from the stairwell there, FFS taking a lot of spam damage and they might be wise just to run away here but they're... Oh actually there's two frag team and OZR go down and with the red spawn favouring could continue with this push here, both medics have Ubered, it's just about to fade but the reinforcements from for Freak's sake will be on the field faster so uh, this is a dangerous time for life to be moving forward, he does get caught off as TJ comes in from behind HSK is gonna kill off TJ but that medic pick could prove crucial here. Not only do they have the fast spawns, they still have heals here, so they can take their time to destroy all the blue players left alive before they want to cap the point and give them those fast spawns. But like, oh as God. I say, that Ozier just runs in on the flank down the stairs, kills King and Lionheart the medic, then able to pocket. Uh, that was uh, heartbreaking to watch. Yeah, I feel like FFS doesn't seem to understand like how they're supposed to deal wide because he's been constantly bombing in early and getting to key picks. They need, to, they need to find a way to deal with that, because I think the blue team has been taking care of the enemy Roma bombs like, a lot better. Yeah, I absolutely agree. The, the, the scouts have been all over it. They're hounding them down anytime there's a bomb in. Uh, here's White and OZR working the cliffside, while the rest of the blue team are over on the left playing around the lunchbox. They're just getting their heels here. They're going to try and walk forward. I don't think it's going to be a suicide. Wave. There comes a bomb in from TJ, forces life up against the wall, hits him with a rocket. And uh, after we were just praising the defensive capability <laughs> of LJB, they go and let one soldier bomb in against four players and kill the medic. Uh, w well played, well played. But well, on he, that... Yeah, he just he bombed just, in and destroyed two people. Looks like they're winning the DM fight though. Blue team's gonna take this. Even yeah, though they just like, lost uh, Textbook TF2, if your medic dies. Just throw caution to the wind, jump in and try and get as many frags as possible, and they delivered on that. Life spawned quickly because they didn't control oh the point. Oh my god, Rufus is jumping in! Life on 16, 19! The regen kicks in, and uh, he's going to be able to back off and get the kit there, but if only there'd been someone to follow up a little sooner, but now the FFS scouts are going to come in after Life has already made back to the med pack. And uh, Crab Patty is going to go down. It's all on Toshihiko here as the reinforcements coming in for FFS. Oh, big bomb in from wide! His first rocket is wow. a sensational straight headshot rocket there. And the second <coughs> will just obliterate King and Lionheart. Excellent bomb there. And he's got his man or his woman yet again. Yeah, it seems like the blue scouts are actually working together a lot better than the red scouts, I feel. Oh, well. Cast his curse. Happy just takes down the better. <laughs> uh, this is uh, pretty hectic right now. Uh, it's 24 seconds on the clock for the blue team LGB, but uh, it's actually ticking down in favour of the Reds right now as they go past the minute mark. 55 seconds left on the clock. Babel's going in, get Toshi Eagle, but gets cleaned up by Crab Patty. White actually kills himself on the cliffside. And they are. Oh, also takes down the middle. Oh, wow. Again, OZR going huge there. Another medic pick, and uh, King and Lionheart is going to be a little bit frustrated, but. Looks it like seems like 
This is the Asian for something? Thing. Is no, it... it's just the it's just a painted in like Asian. Whenever the clock's ticking down, just rush in and disregard all strategy. But they <laughs> just seemed the like uh, LTB were have waited for King and Lionheart to get back on the field. They could have pushed a lot sooner there, but now they're coming in. Even though the clock is ticking down, they want to make this a dramatic finish. I think they've got times two on the point there. They get Rufus. Rufus is always dying so early in these engagements. Look at the health on the FFS side. It's not looking good as. Uh, Life passes Uber as well, so they can contest this point. A little pause here just to keep us on our toes, but I would like to imagine that LJB, LGB or LJB are going to be able to take control of this or hold yeah. off the, the red wave here. I feel like the blue scouts have been doing more work though, like Alzer and HSK, as soon as they see tons of damage putting, getting put forward, they just rush forward and like clean up everyone, but most of the red scouts seems to be just, you know, staying back and trying to push together as a team, which I don't know if it's working out. They keep letting Rufus die, as, as you said, which is causing them the game, I think. Yeah, it could just be like a call thing, you know, like, if you want your scouts to follow up on the damage, you need to call it out, maybe Creep is doing a better job of relaying that information or maybe their timing or their chemistry is just a little bit better but like every time I see this situation where FFS are defending the point Rufus is like standing to the right alone and like he's the obvious target he's the guy that's like most exposed there and it's not necessarily I suppose it's partly his fault for deciding to stand there but like his medic or his team aren't there to help him out he's always just in an isolated and picked off just seems yeah. like a, like a, t a tactical error or a strategy error that they're just not thinking about what they're doing but it's happened like three four times and uh, he hasn't learned his lesson yet but we're still in a little pause here if you have just joined us this is Team Forest TV with Admirable formerly Commander X and uh, Shunik we got John on the camera and we're watching the Asia Fortress Mercenaries Cup 5 it's the grand final second map we saw Lee Jong Boon Beat for freak's sake on Gully Wash, but right now on Viaduct they're trying to do the same thing. They have the pause has ended though, and uh, life is just to hold on to his Uber as well. The clock is ticking down past 10 seconds. The announcer is going to kick in soon to tell FFS that it's all or nothing. And uh, one, two, one, nobody can even make it in on time to keep the point alive. TJ just about touches it, but uh, it quickly decays and it's going to be 2 0 here. Do you play first to three shooting? Yes. So this Actually, is match no. point right now. Uh, it's not quite. I think it's first to four. Four? Oh, that's American style. Uh, we play three in Europe for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, that means it's not match point just yet. Wade with the skip jump straight into Rufus. Destroys the FFS demo man and uh, has managed to stay alive himself. But, well, this could be a complete wipe. No player on the LGB side. LGB side has died yet and they managed to get three frags. What was that all about, should it? Well, actually, I've been told that they paused because then they realized that they haven't executed the proper King of the Hill conflict, so... I'm not sure if they're actually still playing seriously, but it looks like it. They might be restarting soon or not, but... That's what I've been told they've been pausing for. And, uh, Abel's just lagging in their respawn room. Restarting? What were they gonna restart for? Uh, they got the wrong... They didn't, um, execute the correct conflict before they started. So then the timer is still clicking when there's not supposed to be a timer for King of the Hill. Oh, the map time? Yeah. They could just change that, right? They can just do time limit. But, uh... I just reconnected sneakily there to fix my HUD and I can see that, uh... LJB still in control of the point here as the re-push is slowly but surely coming in for for Pete's sake. They're not really bombing anyone in, they're just walking forward together slowly, spamming down rocket after rocket. Lots of stickies getting pumped out there. OZR's managed to work his way behind on the flank and he comes in, buckshot into the back of Rufus. He's gone down as well. Wide died earlier there. Now Ubers are getting popped off, but still the point remains in control of the blue team here. Lee Jong, boom. And uh, just as the Ubers fade, they've managed to pick up life there. W40k life going down, the blue medic is not on the field and that's going to encourage his teammates to just bomb forward here, try and find King and Lionheart and they're doing a pretty decent job. She's backed off towards spawns, managed to stay alive but the rest of her team have gone down there. We have secured the control point. Yeah, there's a lot of aggression from the blue team and it seems like there's been a lot more focus fires I've said before, like I always see one of the scouts look wide and they've been making some pretty big plays. Looks like Red's trying to push out here though, but they're taking... They're actually not taking that much time, they've been 
given quite a lot of space by the red team for some reason. Yeah, bad time to die whenever you're in control of the point like that, but uh, it looks like Creep is containing the, the red aggression quite well. He and Babel with the spam are just making, for freak's sake, think twice about this and they managed to buy enough time for their respawns to come in. Abel is uh, not on the field as it stands. But King and Lionheart has had Uber for a few seconds now and there's, they're not really going forward. They want to make sure they can see life, I think, before the Uber. But uh, they are thinking about pushing. They just want to cap the point instead of going forward for the frags. And that's strange. Like, if they use the Uber advantage there for the medic pick, it could buy them a lot more time. But effectively, they just sat back and let life get his charge up. And the health isn't good on the FFS side. A few other players are super weak. And now they're just going to give up the point altogether. Is my HUD broken? They do actually have Uber and they have popped off. <laughs> I'm not wrong here, uh, Ubers getting treated on the, the mid point, but it's what happens outside of these Ubers or after the Ubers, HSK just walks forward and destroys TJ with the last seconds of his flash, and FFS only have one player alive, it is their medic, and as I say that, she's going to die, King and Lionheart into the spawn queue, courtesy of a needle projected from a crossbow there by uh, W40K Life, and LJB are again in the driving seat here on this, the third round of Viaduct. Yeah, it looks like they've opted not to go for a suicide wave, they're just going to go straight for it. Meg's going with them through the bottom left side, the cliff side, and Blue's actually respecting quite well. They've been given a lot of space to move out and... Oh my god, the focus fire is too good. It's too yeah, much just, for the red team. They let them walk forward and uh, just add all that damage from Creep doing a great job here. Uh, and they let Life get his charge up as well, if they pushed in and really attacked all at once they might be able to deny life from getting that uber but he has been able to pop off here and this is just looking excellent right now tj bombs in trying to make something happen he's gonna go down crab patty jumps up on the air gets stunned does a 360 then falls to his death but it doesn't matter it's gonna be 3-0 here and this is now match point the next round if it goes in favor of lee jong boom will mean that they win not just this yep. map but the whole tournament right yep it's not even match point, it's not map point, it's it's tournament point <laughs> right here. And they're going to have uh, three or four of them. But uh, we're going into this fourth middle. Let's see a little config reload it. Don't be confused, guys. Uh, they haven't restarted. I think it will s still be 3 0, right? Mm, but they'll just play one more match and catch them there, I think. The uh, first blood on this mid goes to HSK. He gets a second frag as well, kills both soldiers. Uh, with the assist from Babel and Wide, but Toshiko gonna step forward find HSK as Crab Patty also kills Babel, but uh, it will be for Freak's sake taking control of this midpoint. But Wide tries to skip jump, fails it. Uh, his rocket actually kills the momentum there and he just jumps back rather than dying. Smart move, but this point is in control for Freak's sake right now. That, that means that the LJB guys are gonna spawn significantly faster. Look at this double bomb! Everybody's coming forward trying to find life, but he just sees it coming, looks up and sees all these red figures on the horizon, then backs off into spawn, manages to hold on to Zebra, but it was a nice idea there by TJ and Abel, they couldn't get the force, and uh, now their team finds themselves shorthanded as they try to hold on to middle here, and they get yeah. forced first. Wide is going in for a pretty good bomb, and looks like they're giving the Uber to their scouts, and they've actually been cleaning up quite well. They got two facts by their scouts already. And now they're going to take the point for it. FFS doesn't seem to be able to counter the aggression, and like we said, Rufus is constantly dying on these pushes. The team needs to do something about that. He's always dying, and maybe it's a coordination issue, honestly. Yeah, Rufus back on the field now. He's coming up from cliffside. Uh, Pre-fire pipes from Creep. We'll let him know that people are pushing that cliff area. King and Lionheart catches a bit of damage there, down to half health, but they're just going to continue to walk forward here. And bully back the LJB players. Wide's gonna bomb in though, he's not sure who he wants to target as everybody from FFS just seems to step back for a second. But uh, this is smart play here from life. He's uh, allowed, for freak's sake, to cap the point. So uh, like, if they push in now an Uber and it doesn't uh, work out for them, they still spawn very fast and they continue the repush. But if they push in now and uh, do well, you know, they can uh, still recap the point without really losing much time. It's like an insurance policy. <laughs> but Wide has gone in, Cat, and got the force out there. But meanwhile, Abel and Crab Patty have all died. Add, add to that, TJ, Wide goes down eventually. 
But uh, pretty smart play there from LJB, and they execute it well, obviously, with those aggressive plays. And Life managed to hold on to the Uber charge here as well. So, like, nobody from FFS managed to penetrate that defense, and they also failed to keep their own medic protected as well. Yeah, what I saw from Line was that he forced the Uber, but then like, he took out the equalizer and started dancing, and like the Uber was on Rufus, <laughs> and he couldn't connect with the pipes and the stickies, and wasted the entire Uber. Yeah, I'm looking at the sticky traps of creep right now, he has them all over the cliff, and uh, the wooden board on middle there, and oh, White gets dealt with very well by, for freak's sake, they all turn around and shut down the uh, LJB rumor with a plum. well played. HSK is going to die as well, so those are the two big m -like players down right now, or two of them at, at least for LJB, but they have decided to Uber in here, they want to contest the point or force out the Uber from for freak's sake, and they do get the pop, and their spawns are going to come in as Abel and TJ are down right now, this is going to be man advantage on this next engagement without Uber charge here, so FFS might want to back off, maybe even give up the point for a few seconds. Uh, they need to keep King and Lionheart alive, but she steps forward at the wrong time, gets caught on the railing, and Babel is going to send her to the spawn queue with the shotgun. Life is up under pressure here from Abel, dancing around on that wooden fence and the rock, but the second bomb coming in from Rufus, but he can't hit even the tiniest bit of damage there onto Life. And uh, again, we see the LJB medic staying alive here, and they are looking good right now in this tournament point round. Yeah, and they're actually a lot more aggressive now. Actually, it seems like they're packing up so that Y can sit on top of the kind of frame and kind of drop down on the enemy team as it comes, and he's doing another bomb, but I don't know, maybe he's just distracting them. I guess he's trying to slow down the suicide wave. Uh, and yeah, it doesn't look like they're getting anything. Roof is going in early and just dying on his own, and yeah, I think this curtain issue is real, but oh my god, they actually come through with a rocket, so life goes down, Beautiful. and... <laughs> just as I tell, just as I say that I've caught an issue, they're always going to get the medic. He did surf it, uh, but he uh, surfed his way to death, ended up eating another rocket there at long distance, but there's frags being given away for free, Babel and Wade both going down here, Crab, Patty and Toshihiko, uh, the benefactor of that soldier aggression, and uh, it looks like for freak's sake are going to take control of the point again. 18 seconds remaining on the blue clock, but Red have just started to tick down again. They are at 1 minute and 5 seconds, so they need to hold on here against this blue horde. Uh, this is like survival horror here. Their spawns significantly <laughs> slower whenever they are in control of that point, so their lives are more valuable. They want to die, they want to die early, but right now the blue team are on top of them and the drop oh. comes in. Babel with the magic rocket It's going to drop for freak's sake, King and Lionheart. And uh, that's like the the ideal scenario there from a suicide wave. Not only did you, f you didn't even force the Uber, you just made the medic drop. So uh, congratulations, life is just about to hit his 100% mark and they will be pushing out very shortly. They just need to be careful about where uh, TJ is. Look at him hiding above mid there, Shinnik. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he'll catch them on the way out, but I don't think they're going to go that way. Oh, oh, actually, able to... oh, he just forces to pop, that's not bad. Yeah, and they're going to scream across the point here, and I think when uh, the blue team soldier aggression goes well, the is going to rush for it and kill everything. It looks like it's happening. Babel's getting lots of frags. He bumped him with wide and got like 5k, so... Doesn't think, look uh, very good for FFS right now. It's 5 seconds around Rufus left. has no and... idea how to play this map. He just keeps dying all the time. He's always in the wrong position. Got rushed again by HSK there. And yeah, uh, yeah those congratulations, I guess, are in order for Lee Jong Boon. They've just... Made a fourth cap here. GG's being called out on the server, but they've taken this grand final in uh, two maps. There won't be another best of three. No, it's all over. Am I right? It's all over. Damn, son. <laughs> LGB took both the maps, and I guess the Koreans will never be toppled. Koreans is going to dominate Asian forever. Korea dominance here, yeah. I wonder if I can find a log real quick before we should... wrap proceedings up here. Yeah, it should come up through the chat soon, like it did last time. But, I'm trying yeah. to... I think I'm checking FFS... the, the profile here. Can't, I can't find it! <laughs> yeah, FFS I bet we did pretty well, though. We're not going to get any logs because of the weird config changes and whatever. Oh, yeah. But, it doesn't uh, look like the previous one got uploaded as well. Screw those guys, then. 
I'm going to wrap things up right here. Uh, if you've just joined us, you missed everything. It is the end of Team Forest TV's coverage of the Asia Forest Mercenaries Cup 5. It was the grand final between uh, Korea's Lee Jong Boom and For Freak's Sake, who were representing Singapore and Malaysia. But uh, it was a straight two map victory. The first map, Gully Wash, went 3 to 2 in favour of LJB, and they won Viaduct in convincing fashion 4 0. Uh, well played to those guys. Big congratulations. But uh, this is the end of our coverage. I've been admirable. Commander X was here. We've had Shunik the whole time. Yeah. Our uh, Asian reporter. And we had John on the camera. So thanks to all those guys. We're going to be back here on Team Forest TV in quite a few hours time. I think for an episode of Fully Charged Europe. But that's going to be way later on. I'm not even sure if the event is up. Maybe I should do that. But uh, <laughs> keep an eye on Team Forest TV for uh, all your global competitive TF2 needs. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to cast here today, Shunik. This was awesome. <laughs> you are a terrible racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, white power. We'll end it on that. <laughs> uh, thank you. Good All night, right. good morning, good afternoon.